Uh, I'm Andy with Rira Tree School of Natural Living. Out here in a quite hot and muggy day. I wanted to show you uh, some avaladdles and darts that I made. And if you're not familiar with avaladdles, um, the general idea here is that this thing, the avaladdle, effectively increases the length of your arm. So when you throw, let me put a couple of these down. This hooks on the end here, you can see. And when you throw with this, it basically makes your arm longer. So you flick this forward, and I'll, I'll do some throwing in a minute. Um, makes the dart, which is basically a spear or a giant arrow, see so it's fletched on the end, much, much more effective. Increases its range, its power, so the uh, early people uh, used these to hunt mammoths and other really, really large creatures. Uh, still used up into historical times in Australia for all kinds of game and people. Um, probably known throughout most of the world, I would imagine, one point or another. And it's relatively simple. These outdated bows and arrows by thousands, tens of thousands of years, especially in this continent, where bows and arrows are relatively recent, only a few thousand years old. Um, I don't know that I'll ever hunt with these. Um, people do. They're, I think Pennsylvania here, it's legal to hunt with these. There's a great guy, um, Thunderbird Adeladdle, who's done a lot around that. You can buy kits from him. He's the guy who introduced me to Adeladdles. Um, and they're, they're so much fun just to use. Just a target practice, practice with in the backyard. Um, so I'm going to show you some close ups of these and talk more about atlatl and the darts and how I made them. And I'll do a little bit of throwing for you. This is a design that is quite modern. I don't think that anyone in ancient times used anything like this. It has a little rest for the dart. The dart sits right in there. Uh, your hand goes like this. And um, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't create the design. I, copied it. Uh, this one's a little short for me, quite short for me. My normal length would be like this guy here, which I'll talk more about in a second. Um, I made this out of black locust. I really, really like it. I think it came out really pretty. Black locust and some, and I don't know, someone gave me some wood years ago as a gift and it's very dense and quite pale and really pretty. That's what this is. Uh, I don't recall what it was, um, but the locust is just a gorgeous wood and the sun here is a little too hot for the camera, uh, too bright, but I might try later getting some shots in the sun because just in case this isn't doing it justice because just the lusciousness of the locust I, I love is a really pretty wood. I hope that's in focus. And this is Osage, which I live in Connecticut. Um, Osage doesn't grow here, or I'm sure there are a few somewhere growing, but it's not something I come across all the time. Someone uh, was nice enough to give me some scraps, and so that's why you can see these bands of sinew on here, because this is actually, if you look really closely, cracked longitudinally, lengthwise, I don't know, from about here all the way down the end of the handle, right off the edge. Um, but because it's beautiful and I don't see it very often, I just reinforced it and used it. And it's quite beautiful. And actually the back here uh, was right up against the sapwood. I captured a, the transition there. So it's a slightly different color, which I really like in the sides. Just what a beautiful material. And part of the fun of making these for me is that uh, they can be so beautiful and you can, the shapes are very elegant. The, uh, the wood I can use, really beautiful wood, which really appeals to me. So, you know, if I was in a survival situation in the woods, I would just cut a branch, a piece of a tree that had a little branch sticking out of it like this already, 
cut it off to length, nip this, and I've done this many times, I've made these this way many times when I teach it to kids and stuff, that's how I teach it. And you got an atlatl and there's no, no, nothing fancy, you don't have to get fancy at all, you could do it with just rocks, it wouldn't be difficult at all to uh, do it without any metal tools. Uh, a simple pocket knife would be that much more efficient. Now the darts, see here, I don't know if I can get this one out, how good I can. Um, this is the fore shaft for this dart. It's not very long, and because I'm just fooling around in my backyard, it's basically like a field point, a, uh, a practice point. Uh, to hunt for real, you'd put a stone point on there, and in, on this continent, these were tipped with the famous Clovis points, at least for part of their era which were long and fluted so they could sit right in here, really beautiful. In Europe, I'm not sure if they were Clovis, similar to the Clovis points or not, but the same idea, they would sit inside here and then you'd stick them on this. Now, why do you ask waste that time? Well, there's two reasons. One, uh, sometimes it's easier to find straight dart material that's not very robust or maybe even hollow. People use river cane in some places. Um, so it might be necessary to have a harder wood as the foreshaft. Another reason, which I think is pretty amazing, is that you can carry like 20 of these in a little pouch on your belt. And I'm sure it takes more than one to kill a mammoth or a giant sloth or whatever else they're going after. Um, so, but this is, it's hard to carry 20 or 30 of these, which is too long even to fit in the shot. And this is, you know, I got two links here. This one's a little bit shorter. So you could carry two or three of these, shoot the mammoth. When this goes in, this pops off. You know, it walks past a bush, it gets knocked out, or maybe it just pops off on the impact, leaving this inside and maybe a hole to bleed through, which sounds terrible. And then this is on the ground. So you just pick this up or the other guy's uh, dart that he threw, and stick a new point in out of your pouch on your belt, and a sharp point, you throw it again. So I found that these, the darts here need constant straightening. Can you see? This one is not the straightest thing on earth. Um, and basically every time I use it, I gotta re-straighten it, heat it up, because it's made out of, you know, a sapling. It, this was a, I think it was some kind of viburnum. I never did figure out which one, but it, viburnum is known for being straight. Uh, there's one kind of viburnum called arrowwood that's great for making arrows. I don't know that this was that or not, but it was pretty straight. It's hard to find a straight stick in the woods, even one that's not completely straight. Uh, but a little heat and I can get this really, really nice. I fletched the end. The fletching on this one's a little ragged because I do throw these. Um, I use sinew to attach them, hide glue. I reinforced around the divot in the end. That's what this goes into there. I reinforced that so it wouldn't split because uh, it's is starting to split a little bit there actually probably just from drying I dried them maybe a little too fast and in this end I definitely I strongly reinforced right here with sinew and hide glue to keep this from shoving its way in there so hard that it splits this this one's held up really good this one's newer this dart is newer this older one has seen a lot of action it got burned when I was straightening it it has a bunch of splits right here and the sinew is a little ragged. The end is blunt. Is this one I've thrown the most? It's a couple of years older than the other one. It's also dirty. Uh, and I fletched it in a different way, so these are only held at the ends. 
which I don't do anymore because it's noisy and I don't think it's probably not as accurate, but it was quick, uh, which was at the time I was trying to make this in an efficient manner, so that was important. It is not reinforced at the end. They haven't had any trouble yet. Maybe it's just luck. So the Adelaide darts, a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy messing around with them. Uh, and they're a viable hunting tool. They were used for millennia, and, and people probably still today, I'm sure, I know, still today hunt with them. Uh, they'd be way easier to make in the woods than bow and arrows would be. Um, so something to consider practicing, even if you're totally all about survival skills, uh, I don't know that I'll ever hunt with these. It's more just for the craft of it and the practice and the fun of it and making something that our ancient um, ancestors all used. So, thanks for watching, and if you're into this.